The Hierarchy of Controls The Hierarchy of Controls is a tool developed by industrial hygienists to determine feasible and effective hazard controls in different work environments. The Hierarchy of Controls is represented as an upside-down triangle. The control methods listed at the top of the graphic are generally more effective than the methods listed toward the bottom of the triangle. Using this hierarchy as a basis for control decisions leads to safer systems with inherently reduced risk of illness and injury for workers. The hierarchy of controls consists of the following activities and interventions, listed from the most effective to least effective. Elimination Substitution Engineering controls Administrative and work practice controls and Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE. Ideally, the best method to control worker exposure to an occupational hazard is by eliminating the hazard at its source. If this is not possible, the next best solution is to substitute the hazard with a less hazardous material or work process. In reality, however, Elimination and substitution may not always be possible or feasible to implement for an existing process. Therefore, if elimination or substitution are not possible, then engineering controls and administrative and work practice controls should be used to reduce and maintain employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica at or below the permissible exposure limit. When engineering and work practice controls do not sufficiently reduce employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica, these controls should nonetheless be used to reduce exposures as much as possible, and only then these controls should be supplemented with the use of respiratory protective equipment. This reduction in exposure levels benefits employees by reducing the required protection factor of the respirator, and thus increasing the choices of respirators that can be used. You may be wondering why PPE is the last, least effective option. The reason is that PPE can sometimes fail, suits can rip, gloves can tear, and respirators can break down. Therefore, the use of PPE must not be the primary method of hazard control. Instead, PPE should be introduced as a last resort when all other higher-order controls are not sufficient to keep employee exposure to hazardous contaminants within safe levels.